take a look at a semi bluff. Uh, again, I, I've got a, a short stacked situation just because it it keeps the math nice and simple. So we've got to the, we've gotten to the turn. Uh, there's 40 big blinds in the pot. We're heads up, and there's only 20 big blinds behind. So our opponent checks to us, and we have a choice. Uh, let's say that our opponent is the type where he's only going to call if he's ahead. Uh, we're we're going to really, really boil this down nice and simple. Uh, that you know we're on a draw that is right now way behind. You know we've we've got low cards. Uh, our opponent surely has us beaten right now, uh, but we also, for some reason, we know our opponent is not drawing. So if our opponent calls, he is going to be ahead. If our flush hits, we will win the hand. If we miss, our opponent will win the pot every time. Uh, and if we hit our flush, our opponent is not going to pay us off. So it's that kind of situation where our draw is obvious, our opponent is either going to call and be ahead of our nothing but behind our flush, uh, or our opponent's going to dump it if we try and bet. So the question is, how often does our opponent have to fold in order for a shove on the turn to be best? Okay, so we're we're looking and we're saying, given this, our uh, noticeably more complicated situation than just a river shove, you know, facing a river shove, uh, we've got a lot more moving parts here, uh, but it boils down to a simple question, which is, how often does this guy have to get out of my way, in order for a bet here to be a smart choice? So. Uh, the first question is, what is our expected value if we just check behind? Uh, there's 40 big blinds in the pot. If we check behind, 9 out of 46 cards are going to win us the pot. right? We, we can see in front of us the 2 cards that are in our hand, the 6 cards that are on the board. That leaves 46 out of 52 cards unseen. 9 of them give us a flush, the others don't. Uh, we hit the flush, we win what's in the pot right now. Remember, we're assuming we get no extra payoff if we hit our pot, if we hit our flush. So our expected value is 9 times out of 46, we win a 40 big blind pot. The other 37 times, we win 0, right? We're, we're going to lose the pot. We're not putting any more money in, uh, so... 9 times out of 46, we win the 40 big blinds. This gives us an expected value of 7.83 big blinds. That's nice. You know, don't, don't get me wrong. This is a winning play. Checking behind is a winning play. Uh, it, it does win us some money on average. We're going to get a part of the 40 big blinds that are in the pot back. But the question is not does checking behind win us money. The question is under what circumstances would semi bluffing be even better than checking behind? So what we're going to do is look at the expected value of shoving on the turn. Uh, some fraction of the time our opponent will fold. When he does, we win 40 big blinds. If he does not fold, well, nine cards let us win the 40 big blinds that are in the pot already, plus 20 more, because he paid, uh, paid us off. Uh, the other 37 cards lose us the 20 big blinds that we wager in addition, right? Because we're, we're throwing in an extra 20. So this would be worse than checking behind. Uh, so if you look at this and we say, okay, we, we have one unknown variable here, and that is the odds that our opponent folds when we shove, right? When we kick in the extra 20 big blinds, 
some fraction of the time our opponent just dumps it and lets us have it. The rest of the time he calls and the math plays it out. Uh, so call the probability that our opponent folds f. And then what we're going to do is, instead of having nothing but numbers in our expected value calculation, we'll have numbers and the variable f. Okay, And that looks like this, uh, where we know that the expected value is f fraction of the time we win 40. Right, f fraction of the time he folds and we just win the 40 big blinds right off the bat. The other 1 minus f of the time, we have the situation described. You know, 9 times out of 46, we win 60, right? The 40 that are in the pot plus the 20 he pays us. The other 37 times out of 46, we lose the, the, the 20 extra that we throw into the pot as a semi bluff. Uh, so mathematically, we boil this down to an equation of 44.35f minus 4.35. That's our expected value. Now we set that equal to the expected value we calculated from checking behind. Right? We set that equal to the expected value from checking behind and then we solve for f. And what we get is 27.46%. In other words, if our opponent folds to our shove at least 27.5% of the time, then on average, shoving is a better choice than checking behind. If our opponent doesn't, if we don't think we're going to get a fold at least you know 27.5% of the time, then we're better off checking behind. Right? We have compared two possible choices mathematically, and we figured out just how often our opponent has to give it up on the turn in order for the semi-bluff to be a better choice than taking the free card. Uh, and that's the kind of thing that, again, helps you to hone your game. Because if you know these things off the top of your head, then you don't just have options available to you. You have a hierarchy of options. You know which choices are the best for you, which ones are the worst, which ones on average are going to pay you better, which ones on average are going to lose you money. Uh, then you combine that with the artistry of knowing your opponent, knowing their tendencies, where they are in their head right now, how they're going to approach you, you know, what their range is, all of that sort of stuff. You use the math to make the artistry more intelligent, more effective, uh, and ultimately more profitable.